Good morning, everyone, and welcome on our webinar. It's the second uh, webinar in the series of joint webinars organized in partnership with representation of Russian Chamber of Commerce in Germany. And our organization, SIBB. Um, and so the webinar is dedicated to the topic developing smart transportation and smart city systems in Russia and Germany. And a few words now about SIBB Association for those who are first time with us. So we exist, we exist since 1992 and currently we gather around 270 members, different companies, and our association represent digital world of Berlin and Brandenburg on the international area. And our three main directions are United States, Poland, and Russia. And the Russia is Russian uh, direction is one of the, our most important and within the frame of our project Deep Tech Hub Russia, we strive to make connections with Russia stronger, more trustful, and ongoing. And it's my honor to give a welcome words now to Managing Director of SIBB Association, to Mr. René Ebert. Yeah, hello and good morning, everybody. Um, Vlad, just a small note that everybody is hearing me. Yes. OK, fine. Just checking. Yeah, my name is René Ebert. I'm the managing director of SIBB. Um, my colleague Vlad already uh, told you a little bit about our association. Um, I want to add a little bit more. Um, a little bit more about the scene in Berlin we are representing at least as the association of IT companies. Um, in Berlin we have over 110,000 people more or less working in the field of IT in the, in the digital branch that we are representing as the association of that branch. We have 10,800 companies accounted in the last year in, 2000, uh, in 2020. And the turnover is 13.7 billion euros, quite a lot. And it, it's increasing every year over the last years. And every sixth new job in Berlin is created in our industry, in the IT sector. And uh, that is um, a tremendous achievement because back in the uh, years uh, 2000, uh, Berlin was not, so, not uh, such a relevant uh, IT sport like it is nowadays. And we are very happy about this, of course, because we are representing this branch in our region, Berlin, and not to forget Brandenburg. That's why you have, we have those two Bs in our name. It was founded, uh, my colleague didn't mention, that it was founded as a software initiative, Berlin, Brandenburg, and that's uh, how the companies in our region know us. And more and more uh, other regions know us as well because we have these international projects. Uh, my colleague Lat mentioned them. And one of the main directions is building bridges between Berlin, Berlin IT scene and um, Russia. And I'm very happy to, uh, that we had the possibility back in May this year to have a first Delegation to Russia from our association. We have been in Moscow and St. Petersburg with entrepreneurs and they had a lot of meetings there. And that's exactly what we want to do and achieve within the project Deep Tech Hub Russia to uh, set up connections between companies from both sides and starting, you know, to uh, have trustworthiness in both directions. And I also want to add that we as a regional association um, are not looking so much on, you know, on the political level, because our experience over the years is that the companies, the small and medium sized companies uh, on both sides uh, can interact despite the, you know, the political scenery uh, much above us. And that's why we are running this project. 
And we are very happy to have a team uh, more. Some people in our team are speaking fluently Russian and that's what we need. And I'm very happy to um, that we have this project and this is a long lasting project. And the most important factor for the success of such projects are the partners. And I'm very glad that we have in Berlin a partner. Um, it's a foreign trade uh, organization from Russia, run for a long time by Dr. Sergei Nikitin and the AHK in German, Außenhandelskammer, uh, is our main partner for this project, Deep Tech Hub Russia. And I guess Mr. Nikitin is today also in this uh, webinar in front. And we are all here in Berlin. And I guess in Russia, this is the same. We are just in front of the summer break. So this is our more or less one of our last activities today. And that is, should be enough from my side. And Vlad, you know who to him I am handing over or you are doing this as the moderator of this webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Weber. And it's my pleasure to give a word now uh, to make a first presentation of today to, Andre, to Mr. Andres Fleischmann, who is the global head of sales in DCX Innovations. And he will present very interesting and very actual topic, which sounds increase public safety and the efficiency of paid parking zones by using state of the art scanning technology, leveraging the tech, AI, LiDAR, city scanner, combines proven reliability with ease of use. Mr. Fleischmann. Thanks a lot for your introduction and welcome everybody. And um, yeah, it's always great to, um, to have discussion on smart city application that this is so a broad and wide area. And I will share my screen and hopefully then you see my slides. Here we go. So, hope everybody sees a slide now with a global map. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Rene, for coming back. So, uh, Vlad, thanks a lot. And I really appreciate to, to have this uh, 15 minutes to present um, a little bit about our smart city technologies. Um, DCX Innovation is a German Polish um, company. So we are located in Berlin as well as in Warsaw. And um, the first installation and the first application is running now since 14 months in the city of Warsaw, very, very um, successful. And though to have a, a short agenda today, so I'm talking a little bit about who we are, DC Accenuation, where we are coming from, what are our main goals, and then coming to one um, a specific um, a specific product called uh, a city scanner and um, what we can do with that uh, system. We at DCX Innovation, we say absolutely, there are so much decisions now upcoming for the future. How will our urban uh, areas look like in 2040 or in 2045. So coming carbon neutral is a topic, uh, but also traffic and mobility is a very, very, very big topic. And um, we are in the, in the opinion that we need a lot of data, a lot of precise data to be able to um, to, to make these um, decisions for the future. And that is our, um, our goal and the, the basic idea behind DCX Innovation. We want to substitute multiple stationary sensor devices um, by one mobile multi-sensor, which can be used for um, a wide different area of, of, of different applications and always fitting into the smart city concept. So city scanner is much more than just an, an, an OCR, an optical conduct reading uh, system to read number plates. It is furthermore 
used in the parking enforcement or can be used in the parking enforcement where we fully automated uh, can read and process the license plate information in combination with the exact position. That is very, very important because that is the key to automate um, the entire system. It's also used in law enforcement topics. So real-time uh, information on license plates or on uh, parking violations. And additionally, we can record and process a lot of infrastructure uh, data as well as environmental data like air quality, uh, CO2, NOx, dust rates uh, inside, uh, uh, inside the city. So coming to the system itself, uh, I show you a short, uh, a short animation. So here you see the, the classic um, way of how it's used to check whether parking spaces are paid or unpaid. And um, though that is the scope of a, of a standard uh, license plate reader, but in our case, and that is so important when you have a look on this, car on the left side, so it is parked on a um, not allowed space. And with the ability that with our system, we can precisely record where the license plate or the car is, it's uh, in an accuracy of five centimeters, we can exactly see, oh, that car is a parking violation. And that can be um, blocking, for example, firefighting lanes. That could be blocking loading zones. That can be uh, blocking uh, bicycle lanes or something like that, or also parking too close to an intersection. And uh, that causes um, a lot of pedestrian uh, accidents in, in our city. So it's a combination of reading the license plate information in combination with the exact positioning um, of the license plate or of the car, that is the key to automate the entire uh, enforcement um, uh, process and really to increase public safety in our, um, in our cities. Now that is uh, what Cities Canada does and um, what is at the moment, so to say, it's a bread and butter business um, of the system, so to, um, to be used in the parking enforcement and to, to gather um, this data. Here you see a, a, a real-time real video. The system works in all weather conditions, day, night, there is an infrared uh, a camera also, uh, also on. It works up to a speed of 100 kilometers per hour with some accuracy of recognizing the, um, the license plate information with more than 90% in a positioning accuracy of lower than, uh, than 30 centimeters. Now, to say um, really um, the, the, the parking enforcement is the key, the key business. And but the, like I said, it is part of the um, of the smart city concept. And by having parking regulations and parking active management of uh, a paid parking zones um, brings um, a lot of more and an increase of efficiency of the um, of all the assets which are really valuable for every uh, for every city quality of life is a big topic when it, uh, it comes to residence parking for example so uh, we keep open the spots really for um, for residents and um, so more we have transfer rates in um, in the parking spaces the better it is for the city centers, uh, a business center. So the, the, the worst situation we can have is that parking is free of charge in a city center because then you have all these long-term uh, parkers in the city which have no influence to the, to the business. Public safety, um, whether we talk about law enforcement and have blacklisted 
um, blacklisted license plate information, what can be transferred in real time. But also um, here in, in, in Germany, we have statistics and researches that more than 20%, up to 25% of all pedestrian accidents in a city are caused by parking violation. So parking in the second row, destroying the, the visible lines for the um, for the pedestrians causes a lot of uh, a lot of accidents and also um, having um, parking slots which are reserved for example for uh, people with disabilities or for um, also firefighters and so on that brings a lot of um, a lot of comfort also to your um, to your citizens. Um, the entire system is um, for sure fully GDPR uh, compliant. That means that coming from the, uh, the optical or the full optical data, what comes from the sensors with uh, the GPS information, there is an on the edge processing. So that means inside the car processing um, of all these information blurring out these uh, personal informations. And then at the end, we have a data set of a very exact positioning of the, of the license plate or the number plate and uh, date and time uh, stamps. So that make it possible to, uh, to automate uh, um, the system. And um, like I said, one of the most important and the biggest differentiation is the accuracy um, with the combination of the leader uh, of the leader system. DCX innovation we take care from um, step A to to set uh, in every installation project. So we are analyzing the existing systems, um, bringing in the geo data of the of the cities that can be by overtaking existing um, CAD or, or digital uh, documents, but it also can be by, by drone flights or, or any other possibility to define where are parking spaces, paid parking, unpaid, forbidden areas um, and all that uh, stuff. And with this information, we create the perfect driving route and uh, then the system is integrated into the software of the city. What is very, very important, um, City Scanner itself is a closed system running on a, a just on a firmware and the rest is coming from the cities itself. So we are not selling any software components to the, to the cities. So it can be fully integrated into your system. So a little bit compared on using your Android phone or an iPhone, which is uh, equipped with, a, uh, with an operating system. And then you can use it like ever you want to do it in your uh, city software. So no regulation on that. Like I said, it is the system is used in Warsaw now since um, 15 months. They started with two cars, bought one very quickly after the first two. And now we are in the final um, decision of an ongoing tender um, where four additional cars are or will be ordered by the city of, of Warsaw. Here you find some, um, some, some quotes of them. So a very, very successful uh, installation of City Scanner. You find a lot of information on our system on the web page of the Warsaw ZDM. So the traffic uh, enforcement uh, department of the city. And um, just to, to give you some reverence results, during the first six months, so uh, like I said, starting with two cars at the beginning, the city of Warsaw alone gained um, an additional amount of 1 million euro on, um, on fines, but also, and that is very interesting, an increase of um, paid parking fees of amount uh, of 600,000 because the discipline, uh, the payment discipline went, um, went up uh, extremely. So these um, 600,000 are also now 
a continuous um, ongoing uh, ongoing topic. So like I said, better payment uh, discipline um, coming here. And that is I come back to the to the beginning. The best thing you can do is really an active management of your uh, parking zones. But when you manage it, and um, especially when it's going to payment, then everybody has also to control it. If there is no control after the um, after the management idea itself, um, it doesn't make sense on a long term um, on a long term uh, base. Now that is. Like I said, it's a bread and butter business for, for a city scanner. But what is also very interesting for every city, and that is where we are going uh, forward more and more here in Germany, also with Berlin, with Munich, uh, with Cologne, um, is, like I said, in smart city applications, cities have a big need to gather information. And with our system, we can provide these, um, these informations very easily. Uh, so for example, uh, what are the change rates? How long does anybody park on, on slot? So that's completely independent on the, on the paid parking, just to gather this information. Statistical analysis of commuters from outside the city, how from where they are coming from. Um, recording and quantification of the proportion searching for parking space. So there are researches um, in, in Europe that about 25%, 25, one fourth of the entire urban traffic is caused by circling around to, to search for free parking spaces. Now, all that is, is um, very interesting to know before making any, any decision for the next 20 years. And also the number of dangerous parking violations. So how much are parking in the second row? Who is parking on a firefighting line or on a loading zone? And all that can be done totally independent on time and place. Uh, so really circling around the city and doing that topic um, more and more and often and often and without the need of installing any single fixed sensor. So you can you have the, um, the performance of a fixed sensor and uh, use it in a mobile. Like I said, um, sorry for that, uh, dust temperature, NOx, CO2, all that can be measured. And um, also another upside potential, we are trying to substitute these handhelds of the patrols by using smart glasses, so to say, the patrol, the foot patrol is walking along the, um, uh, the parking space and get a green light if it is paid and get a red light if, if it is not paid. And then documentation can be made very easily on, um, on that. So now I increased my time on 40 seconds, but thanks a lot for listening. And now I'm open for any um, any questions, um, if you have some, I would appreciate it. Thank you very much, Andreas, for your Welcome. interesting presentation. And of course, we do have questions. And the first question is coming actually from the Mr. René Ebert. And the question is, what are your experiences in finding potential or even better real public customers in cities, in Poland, Germany, or even in Russia? And who is more willingly to play with these new solutions and possibilities? So first of all, City Scanner is definitely a global, um, a global topic with different priorities to different areas. So, for example, in Warsaw and in um, actually we are talking also uh, with Nintendo Swiss Dinsk and, and different other areas in, in Poland, there it is more really to gain, to gain money and to discipline 
the, the existing parking um, uh, areas in the city. Um, when we look to, to the German market, Berlin, Munich, we are more talking about um, parking violations on, yeah, parking on bicycle lanes and um, having that. In, for example, in South, um, in South America, we are more talking about the law enforcement topic. So it is different in every country, and I'm sure also uh, Russian cities have different needs. It is not always the same. And, and that is the beauty of that product, that we really can customize it to the need you have in your city. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your answer. And the second question would be, how would you like to touch base on the Russian market in terms so, of finding partners, distributors? Very good, very good question, Vlad. Thank you. Um, on that. So we are looking definitely for partners. We are not um, willing to, um, to, to, to really establish own, uh, own entities in, uh, in Russia. I think that is too complicated and it's easier to take the local partners into, uh, into the teams. The system itself can be um, pre-assembled uh, in, in, in Germany, in Poland, and then sent to the, uh, to the client. So talking to, let's say, for example, software integrators, which are very familiar with, uh, with the city software uh, equipment um, itself, that would be the idle, uh, the idle partner for, for, our, for our technology. So having really strong partners which are deep in, in that business to, um, yeah, to gain own more, um, more business with our technology. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Uh, dear Andreas, thank you very much for your interesting presentation, which touches uh, really daily issue of parking. In the cities, we all live, many of us live in big, huge cities, very dynamic. So this uh, question, the issue, comes up daily. <laughs> so maybe a solution for many cities uh, in Russia or in Germany. And now it's my honor to give the welcome word to the chief of the representation of the Russian Chamber of Commerce in Germany to the Dr. Sergei Nikizin. Thanks, dear friends, dear Vladislav, dear Herr Ebert. I will speak in Deutsch. My statement will be very short, so I hope it does not bother me that I out of English and out of the in my native Deutsch. Дорогие коллеги, друзья, у меня будет короткое сообщение, поэтому позвольте мне говорить на привычном для меня на немецком и переводить самого себя. Я очень рад, что продолжается наша серия встреч. Я должен сказать, как и в прошлый раз, что не ограничивается тем кругом участников, что сейчас мы видим у себя на экране, аудитория, которая будет вовлечена в этот диалог. Мы будем распространять информацию по каналам торгово-промышленной палаты и э, привлекать все новых участников для того, чтобы активно сотрудничать в том или ином направлении по каждой из тем, которые мы выбрали. Ich würde gerne äh, nochmal bestätigen, dass äh, die Freude, dass wir diese Möglichkeit haben, mal wieder aneinander zu kommen, ist nicht für diejenigen, die in den Runde zusammenkommen, gegeben, sondern wir leiten die Informationen weiter und hoffen, dass das wird animierend äh, äh, andere Unternehmen mit einzubeziehen äh, in diese Diskussion. Und äh, wir werden diejenigen fahren, äh, finden, die vielleicht über die gemeinsame Vorhaben überlegen und weiterentwickeln würden. Äh, со своей стороны, я хотел бы предложить äh, использовать нашу площадку, немецкоязычный äh, сайт для российских предприятий, äh, а для немецких предприятий äh, площадки территориальных и головной нашей федеральной палаты для того, чтобы äh, сообщать о своих предложениях. 
И также второе предложение – это можно индивидуально встречаться для подготовки и сопровождения конкретных проектов. По мере того, как появится идея, что возможно что-то сделать вместе, мы готовы также подключаться индивидуально, работать по каждому направлению. Also ich würde mal vorschlagen, dass man besser die Möglichkeit nutzt, für die Rundschulunternehmen ist die Möglichkeit, deutschsprachige Internetseite von unserer Repräsentanz zu nutzen. Und ich schlage äh, bitte äh, deutschen Unternehmen Internetseiten von unserer Zentrale in Moskau und auch regionale Kammern. Und wenn da zum bilateralen Kontakten kommen soll und ein Projekt in sich sein sollte, dann werden wir selbstverständlich bereit, diese Projekte zu begleiten und in gemeinsamen Regie auch zum Veränderung, wenn es sein soll, bringen oder den Weg zeigen, wie man das gemeinsam managt. Ich höre das большое спасибо за эту очередную встречу, господин Эбот, успехов в вашем дальнейшем творчестве и работе над совместными проектами, успеха тем, кто сейчас будет выступать. И я сразу же позволю себе назвать Марию Андрианову как директор по стратегическому развитию Московского департамента транспорта, которая любезно согласилась принять участие в этой дискуссии, в этой встрече. Also nochmal herzlichen Dank, Herr Erbert, für Ihre Bereitschaft, gemeinsam weiter Projekt zu führen und so aktiv zu unterstützen. Und ich freue mich, bei, äh, gleich äh, Überleitungen zu erlauben an Frau Maria Andrianova, von, äh, äh, Direktorin der Strategischen Entwicklung von Moskau, Department für Transport, erwiesen. Всего доброго, успеха и остаемся на связи. Владислав. Спасибо вам большое, господин Никитин, доктор Сергей Никитин. Uh, thank you very much for joining us and for finding time. And Maria Adrianova, it's my pleasure also. Thank you for joining us, for finding time. So the stage is yours. Okay, uh, dear all, uh, good afternoon. And especially, uh, uh, it is glad to meet you all. And uh, Dr. Sergei, nice to see you again. Uh, we hope to see each other more often. Uh, moreover, we have a lot of uh, things in common. Actually, uh, do I, am I able to share? Okay. Uh, here we go. Can you, uh, can everybody see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm going to give a real short talk about our uh, accelerator. Uh, the name is Moscow Transport Innovations or Transport Innovacy Moskvy. We are uh, fresh ones on the market. We were organized uh, actually last year, October, and uh, we are functioning as a, a technological ad agent that creates. Maria, the I'm sorry for interrupting you. Yeah. Uh, I can see that uh, the list of the files, uh, but not the presentation. Okay. Maybe click on it. Okay, now. Uh, can, can you see? Once again, please. <clears throat> yes. Yes, okay, okay. Super, fantastic, yeah. thank you. Uh, so uh, we started uh, several months ago and we are operating as a technological agent between the technology uh, the new technology that, that, that is being raised in startup teams or in uh, universities. And as you probably all know, Russia is famous for its science, for its uh, bright minds and uh, ability to create innovation. We all know that a lot of uh, startups uh, internationally uh, recognized uh, startups recognized for its technology are originated from Russia. And uh, we are creating the route between this technology and Moscow public transportation as a major buyer, uh, a, a major uh, user for that technology. Uh, we are helping uh, those uh, technological teams, technological groups or startups to test their products in uh, Moscow public transportation, to have clear conditions for running the pilots to have the ability to collect official information on the results of such pilots, like uh, a, a, a approved uh, cost efficiency or uh, impact, uh, social impact, 
or for example um, impact on environment because we have a very wide environmental agenda well uh, i know that uh, you guys in europe also have very strong uh, concerns about how to improve the situation with the environment so we are closely looking at the projects that can uh, improve uh, our uh, set of parameters that we uh, uh, established for ourselves as part of our esg agenda uh, in Moscow. And um, uh, uh, we create the possibility also to obtain investment to create joint ventures with the uh, Moscow government to uh, create joint ventures that would operate for Moscow, provide services to Moscow public transportation. And also, we have a very good uh, opportunity to scale the products, to scale the business of such joint ventures. To, region, to Russian regions, which look closely at the example of Moscow. And probably you all heard that Moscow uh, is holding number one for technology and innovation uh, in public transportation all over the world. And uh, we have opportunity to scale our technology to international market because we have very close relationships with UITP, which is an international organization for public tra transportation. Also, we have close connections with Singapore, with Korea, also, of course, with Berlin. And um, we, we had opportunity to test our technologies uh, in some cities of Europe. And we got very nice uh, feedback from uh, from Europe for, for the level of uh, service that we can provide. Uh, actually, Moscow Transportation is developing so fast because we developed the expertise, expertise to do uh, projects, numerous projects at the same time and at a very short, uh, at a very short time. So we're doing a lot of projects per year and we test uh, different types of ideas and uh, we come to, con con to the, the conclusions real fast. This is uh, the unique uh, skill we are building here in Moscow because we all know that the world is changing and we all need to somehow adjust to the new speed to the, and be uh, flexible and, uh, in order to meet the challenges of the future that is coming. Actually, actually, we have uh, cl uh, quite close relationships with Harvard, with uh, Singularity University, and we are trying to also teach the teams that are coming to us uh, to build innovational business and uh, to sell the products to government because it's another skill. It's very different from creating the technology. The ability, the ability to sell to a uh, organization that is uh, uh, pertaining to government, that is uh, serving the government. It means you need to be able to meet the requirements as to certification formalities, uh, to meet all the deadlines, uh, because uh, you cannot make a mistake if you make a contract with the government. Otherwise, the guys that are making the contract with you would have to penalize you. Otherwise, they would be uh, penalize themselves for failure to obtain additional funds. So it's also a very tricky area. So we are trying to create like a huge value for our startups that are coming to us in order to teach them how to build the product that would fit the market they desire and also how to sell these products uh, to the companies that are owned by the government and that, 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 that have very strict rules to follow, very formalistic. And so, uh, as you can see, we started in October uh, and uh, we had very, very, very successful uh, first, uh, uh, first program. We, ha uh, we had like 50 pilot projects, over 50 pilot projects in our organizations of Moscow Transport and the, the organizations of Mo Moscow Public Transportation are Moscow uh, uh, Metro, Mo Moscow Subway, uh, Mosgor Trans, which is buses and trains so that, that uh, public transportation that uh, is on, on the ground. Uh, also, we have a special organization that works with parking, that organizes uh, parking spaces. Also, we have a different legal entity that works with traffic management. And uh, we have a number of uh, small organizations uh, that uh, provide other functions and services to Moscow public transportation. So it's uh, like a big group of uh, 
government-owned enterprises and uh, the amount of people working for those uh, enterprises is uh, over 100,000 people, which is huge. Maria, so I, it's, big, I, it's a big market. I apologize. Yeah, I apologize yeah. to interrupt you. Can you yeah. please move move the slides farther? So. Uh, okay. Okay. Yes. So, uh, what we do for Moscow transportation, we are attracting uh, uh, what, what I would name it uh, young blood. Uh, the teams that are able to do the product, we are solving problems uh, that we collect uh, directly from our Moscow public transportation. And uh, it is like our intelligence that we do for those teams, because usually, uh, a, a team that is doing a product for a corporate uh, client is, uh, is thinking they are providing the value, but it is not always true. Very few uh, teams actually do the research and do proper interviews, and we help them organize those interviews to assess the demand, to fill the demand of their major customers. And uh, also, of course, we are looking at the, the future and we're trying to attract the technology that would prepare us for the future. So um, uh, already 23 companies found their customers and they are talking to the customers. And uh, now we are running our second product program and we plan to finalize in July. By the way, uh, if we're talking about a uh, city scanner or similar projects. So we are quite into uh, rec uh, image recognition as well. And we're quite into collect, uh, collecting data as well. So we are welcome. Uh, so, so we would love to welcome uh, this project also to our program. And we would uh, be glad to consider mutual possibilities and uh, see what we can do. And especially, yes, we are concerned about data management and we are concerned about data privacy. So in this area, I think we could have a discussion as well. Uh, so um, uh, what are the areas we are looking at? It's uh, everything related to ESG, in environment, uh, social issues. We had uh, quite a number of projects that would improve the quality of life of the citizens uh, traveling by public transportation. Also, we're looking at AI, of course. Uh, so all top technologies that are mentioned uh, in World Economic Forums. We're looking at traffic management closely because uh, Moscow, it's a very, very complicated city in terms of traffic management. Uh, it was originally built for Com uh, completely different amount of citizens and of course amount of cars and uh, it has very complicated structure uh, that, that is prone to traffic jams so we, we are always uh, searching for solutions that would uh, help us uh, decrease our traffic jams and uh, manage our traffic lights uh, pro uh, appropriately and also of course we are looking at our internal processes as well and we are looking at uh, all the solutions that would uh, improve the quality of life of our uh, citizens. So here is a like, list of technologies uh, we are looking into. And uh, it's, uh, I think uh, they are common for all projects that are related to smart city. Of course, we are looking closely at mobility as a service. We have our Troika card, which is uh, uh, very well built and now our Moscow uh, transportation card Troika is going to regions. We have created a joint venture with Russian major bank, uh, Sberbank, uh, probably you have heard and uh, also this project is going, uh, is scaling to all Russian regions and uh, our like ambitious goal is to have a single uh, uh, transportation card, public transportation card for all over Russia. And uh, by that, we would increase uh, connectivity of, this, uh, of the whole country. Probably all of, uh, 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 probably it is well known that Moscow is like a center, major, major center of attraction for uh, huge amounts of people. A lot of people are traveling daily, like three, four, five hours to, to work in Moscow. So this would help, uh, help us a lot. So uh, we are planning like uh, three uh, programs uh, this year. 
Uh, unfortunately, uh, the second program, we're not uh, accepting uh, uh, projects for our second pro program. Our third program uh, hope will, will start uh, in the end of July, beginning of August. So you are welcome to uh, participate, to file uh, your project with our program. Also, uh, we are going to have a lot of hackathons. We are running uh, corporate education for uh, uh, internal entrepreneurship. So we are doing a lot of corporate education as well. So uh, this is our team. And uh, uh, actually, this is a project that I really love. And I see a big future behind that. We are doing a unique functioning entity. And uh, I think we are uh, going to have a lot of uh, breakthroughs in the future. And uh, so uh, thank you so much for your attention and uh, I'm ready to answer questions if any. Maria, thank you very much um, for your tremendously important and interesting presentation. So, uh, there is a question from our side. Will other big Russian cities uh, follow Moscow's approach in transport, in implementing uh, such a transport innovations so that other Moscow cities will, uh, other Russian cities will follow uh, the example of the Moscow city? Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, you're talking about international solutions that would come to Moscow and be scaled to Russian uh, regions, regions, correct? Yes, correct. Yes, yes uh, there is obviously such a possibility because now uh, in Russia we have a trend that we have to really deeply account for the budgets that uh, we receive. And uh, speaking about regions, it, uh, it is working for them as well. So we are, uh, so they are really looking at the possibility to decrease the risks by substantiating uh, uh, their solutions. And if uh, they accept and uh, uh, do something that is successful in Moscow, for them it's easier to substantiate why they spend this amount of money on this very technology. So uh, it is very much helpful. If uh, some uh, supervising uh, organizations comes to, uh, organization comes to them and asks, why you spend this money on these very projects? They would say, okay, it was successful in Moscow. And say, okay, that's fine. Clear, no problem. So Thank you for your answer, uh, Maria. And uh, I want to address the second question from the managing director of SBB, Mr. René Ebert. And the question is, uh, so the Moscow Transport Innovations Demo Day, 18th of February 2021. Uh, yes. uh, will there be a second one in the second half of the 2021? Uh, we are planning uh, one uh, in July, uh, 22nd of July, hopefully, because now we have uh, another wave of uh, uh, pan pandemia with uh, coronavirus. And unfortunately, we are having some strict measures now. So um, we don't know what is going to happen next. Every week we receive updates. Every week the situation is changing, sometimes like every day. So it affects our planning a lot. But we do plan uh, another demo day uh, in uh, July, 22nd of July. Uh, so you are you are very much welcome. If you need a letter of invitation, there is no uh, there is not a problem. Uh, but of course, it's going to be in Russian. But so we will take care of translation and whatever. So, uh, the last one was a blast, actually. <laughs> the people stayed till five a.m. in the morning. They didn't want oh. to leave. Yes, and not because of alcohol, but because of the right company. <laughs> Tremendous. So yeah, I encourage everyone to register to this event. Me, myself, I will definitely be there oh, online. Cool, cool. Hopefully one day cool. offline as well. Yeah. And uh, Maria, I want to thank you for your very interesting presentation and for finding time to join our today's event. Thank you. Thank you so much for the And we will keep in contact uh, definitely for the future. 
absolutely. Okay. Uh, yes. And so uh, now I would like to give a stage to hear Klaus Kradyshek, CEO of WIT Solutions, and he will speak about e-mobility in the context of alternative energy infrastructures. Hello. Hello, everybody. I see the light is to talk here in Germany, so and I have to make the light on. <laughs> um, so um, start my presentation. Um, So, um, everybody will see that, or is that good? It's good? Yes, okay. yes. It's perfect. So, uh, thank you very much to give us the opportunity to make a presentation of our doing and our thinking and um, what we could do with Russia. So, uh, think about it, and I think uh, I will make short the presentation for that. Um, who is that the next one? So um, <clears throat> I'm the CEO of it. Uh, my name is Klaus Kreischeg. I'm the CEO of it Solutions. Um, with Solution is um, established in uh, Germany and nearby Berlin. And we are expert, expert for DC and uh, in the railway industry, and also in uh, some special measurements tools in uh, the area what the e-mobility called. Um, in this thing, uh, in my presentation, I will not go in the in the moving area. I will go back in the electronic area, and uh, what is behind the charging station uh, when you push up your, we take your, you load up your car. And um, the ideal case is for me that you have on your roof um, a solar panel and everything block, blocks in your cars. And uh, the ideal idea is you have to the solar panel on your car and um, everything will be works because, because the one of the things where this is working is, is uh, you need electronic and electronic, you have different kind of concept. One of them is AC and DC. And the DC is the, uh, all the batteries work with DC, all the electronics, all the motors when in electronic cars uh, works with DC. So DC is the focus in, uh, in, in my presentation. And um, uh, all the alternative energy is also comes um, is special to solar energy generate direct DC. The other one is our conversation uh, converting uh, between the transformation with the physical stuff and the uh, electronic. It, but it's not a problem to change this from one to each other. This is a diagram I have now found in English. Um, so, uh, but it, uh, you get an idea. The green area is the uh, renewable energy and is growing, growing. That's a picture from Germany. And um, then the right side is not a problem to change this from um, AC or some generation uh, motors generation to energy to DC. So it's not a big deal to change from one each to the other. Um, a little bit combination of what means the easy of, of your view from electronic side this is my view. Um, the diff, big big difference is the coast side because when you when you make a, a cable you could make a thinnest cable. The thinnest cables mean you need much much more copper and copper will be growing the ex, expensive every day. Uh, I know that because we buy every week uh, some kilo, uh, much hundred kilos roundabout, and every week we'll grow up the price from the copper. So it's uh, it, it's have to be fueled uh, when you have uh, much energy. You need a big cable, and big cable costs a lot of cost. Um, the current DTC you can storage direct in batteries. Then batteries is one of the reasons for the uh, e-mobility. And um, on the other side. Uh, do you have a different kind of technology? It's not a problem in the past was as a big dust discussion. Now we have all solutions to make it different. Use that one or that one, it doesn't matter. And um, one hour thing is this, uh, one of our, our special thing is to, to analyze cables, uh, monitoring cables and from the DC, that's as a different, you need that by the DC, by AC, you don't need it. Um, does you understand a little bit more uh, my view? is I make a lot of short describe about the energy management 
in uh, from the cell, uh, solar panel to the car battery. When you when you have here in the left left hand side, you have a car uh, battery, and uh, you have a, your wall uh, a loading box. The, the, the standard is 11 kilowatts per hour, and when you have uh, when you use that one, you bring in the battery maximum eight com in 0.8 kilowatts hour. So you lose some um, uh, energy. And this energy comes to heat. Um, and so when you go back to your solar, when you want to grow, when you make your load, your battery 8.8 .8 kilowatts per hour, you need 17.2 7, kilowatts hours. And you bring in the, the difference, all of these um, converse converters and the, 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 the uh, losing energy, it goes, most of them is, is uh, uh, heating energy in your uh, in cables or in your environment, et cetera. So this is the issue what you have. So when you have a lot of energy you bring in, you have to convert it and you bring especially heat in it. So it, that's a, a situation when you have just one car, a small car, it's not a, it's, it's a, not a big uh, problem. But when you have, for example, in the future, everybody talk about everybody start with energy by in a, uh, mobility, you make it in a car garage with 100 plugins um, to lo load your car. And then we talk about megawatts, so it's much more as uh, when just one car is moved. This, this numbers here is just the orientation. Uh, so we had then one megawatt and 1.1 megawatts is uh, for the cars. And you have to bring energy 17275 megawatts from the solar, but the solar is a huge reach area to generate that. Uh, so um, you need a, a backup, like a conventional conventional, conventional uh, energy, like uh, Atomkraft or something like that. Um, for the, in, uh, uh, yeah, so. So when you take a hundred cars in a garage, you had also a situation in the morning, somebody come, a lot of people comes into this garage. And I remember there was in Moscow, it was a, it was a huge situation. We walked there and saw a lot of cars. Um, and one of the famous things is uh, huge cars like Rolls Royce and Ferrari and Maserati and um, Bentley, a lot of Bentley's nice cars. I see that and good ro rovers, etc. I don't know they rovers will be the electronic, but a Rolls Royce and Ferraris, etc. I don't know they go in into uh, to electronic. I know that from BMW and Audi, etc. The huge one you could also order it as electronic. And this, when this guy, business guys comes together in a bargain garage and everybody block this huge cars on, you need a lot of power energy in this in this uh, garage. And so far. Um, you have a peak, a loading peak, and in December you have then one point, nearly 1.8 megawatts. You need this for that peak when everybody comes in and plug his car in. And so you need a lot of energy from outside in your garage and to organize that. When you make a planning for a garage like that, you make doing on a maximum plus and buffer. So you need a really, really big, huge. Uh, environment to organize that uh, uh, energy. Um, so in this case, a lot of companies talk about battery buffer. So you have then in front of your garage, then uh, a battery, battery buffer. The benefit of the battery buffer is you could nearly expand it, whatever you like for many megawatt you want. So it's up of the play, uh, your, your room, what you get. And also it's allowed it to do the bulls management. So this is what you see, uh, what we have in the situation in the garage. We have the build, the build situation here like that. And the, the, this one, the red one is the reloading from the battery. And so you have done um, a bulls that, that goes on the car and the battery will just slow, slow in, uh, reload it. So, this is the standard this is the strategy what you're going on to uh, work for. Um, when you go in a public transport, um, like a train, uh, like a bus um, electronic, the situation is much, much complex because 
um, a car will go in a bar, bar, bar garage and uh, still they have time two or three hours to reload by our um, brain. Um, everybody understand when the train will be stayed two hours, it's not cool. And a bus also said if you work 24 hours and each uh, stop, it's closed. And in this situation, you have a very small time frame to reload your train or reload your bus. And in this situation, you need also a, a much, much energy in a small uh, time frame. And this is just to handle it by a battery uh, buffer system. Um, the summary for me is uh, no immobility without any battery. So on the other side, it sounds good. No, everybody knows that. The, the, the gray side or the black side of this idea is the materials to, to make these batteries is limited uh, on our planet. Um, this very limited on our planet. Uh, I know some statistics uh, who say when we growing up allowed this one, the time everybody uh, who's in this meeting, he realized that we have no materials more. So it's, it's difficult to say we do it in the same way as we make by oil. Um, so because the special materials is not enough there. Um, so a lot of people in German talk about first life and second life um, working with battery because in a, in a bus or in a drain, in a bus we have, uh, um, what I know the bus is a, a, a quarter from a million megawatts inside and uh, the drain have nearly a one megabus, uh, megawatt in, uh, in a drain. And so it's a huge energy block what you have there. And it's make not sense to take it out after three years or, or, or five years. So that's in the middle between the three and five years is, um, is the lifetime. And then what we do in after that. So we have a, a system who will still work. Not everything in this package runs. Some something is, is damaged, you had to, to change it. Something to have this will be working fine. Something have you re or re uh, re uh, reorganize it, uh, reload it, uh, remanage it, then it will be work okay. So it is a different kind of situation in so a block like what you get from a train. Um, and so the second life is not easy to handle it. But what is the situation is each car will come in out, they produce uh, a new battery. In the moment, the battery buff is also a new battery. Um, as in, uh, in what we do in all with these batteries. Um, so it's come a new situation, a new challenge uh, in our life when we talk about battery, because a battery is it's not a it's not a, a, a let me say a simple tool. This is a very complex tool. It's a lot of chemical inside, etc. And when you take this, and um, one of the challenges just to collecting, it sounds easy as, as you're thinking because when uh, in the past when we have a um, uh, uh, the situation is that when you have every garage changed then um, the battery in each anywhere the, 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 the station, the train station will be changed, the bus station will be changed, the bus, uh, the, the car garage will be changed. So there are a lot of points where you change the battery. So you have you have collected everything together. Now on the one side and the other side, you have different kind of types, different kind of lifetimes, different kind of um, things. And when a so battery is, uh, is damaged by a great car crash or something like that, um, you don't see something that's happened. So when you take the, a, a block like that uh, from the car, you take this on a, on a drug and you transport it, you have a vibration and uh, the, the, the battery block will be start to react. It. React it means without controlling, when you have not a controlling on that, without controlling, you start to, the simple one is to take a fire on it. Then you take this in a, in a big water play, uh, uh, pool and wait to still does the sim brand out. The fireman is very dangerous for the fireman uh, because very uh, much uh, chemical come out of this um, plot. So the collecting is a really um, another simple thing. It's very complex. So the process is also very complex is how you organize it. And by himself, the reuse is a different kind of thinking as when you use a battery by a car. 
So what we have done in Germany, or we have going on here, make a but uh, things which we said, okay, what we could do with all that, we will make a second life battery buffer. That makes sense because the battery buffer is you have done a, a container, a big huge kind of 40 foot heat container, and you take all the batteries in and um, how we organize that. And we, we is one of the um, a small group of uh, Relius network, and there are around about 12 companies. And these five companies, we have like a special challenge to bring um, a, this a reuse idea, transport, logistics, etc. There's an expert in this meeting, uh, in this group. Uh, we have also technology for so safety st uh, sta uh, station for battery transport, uh, etc. Measurement technology is our bit ex uh, experts for that. And also the, the mechanical stuff, the flexible storage buffers. So um, with GIF is a specialist for measurements tools. And uh, so we have the tools for, for measurements and control batteries and all the organization, the and control the cable infrastructure, the the, the story corn management, etc. So that is our focus, and we offer that we could offer this to um, to, to some relationship to Moscow or to Russian guys, and what in, in our concert or in our uh, group, um, we have discussion about how we take this, what we want plan to do in outside from Germany, and uh, it's making no sense to go with our companies to Moscow and make this uh, and bring this to Moscow as as, uh, as a company. So uh, because the reuse is a very local situation, but what we are want to do it, we want to make consulting for this one. So when the Moscow will think about it, how we do you the reuse, you could uh, you we could collect uh, some experts and make a team together for you and bring this experts then to Moscow and we make them together a project with you and Gladi Consulting is then the head head of the consulting area for that expert. So our idea is not to go to Moscow and collect their uh, batteries and bring make their uh, boxes. So we're looking for partners who uh, have interest in to, to start his own business and we support them to bring this own business uh, in uh, with all our ideas, with our experts, uh, bring this to um, Moscow. Any question? Dear Klaus, thank you for your presentation. Actually, there is uh, the question rolls up here, uh, which I would like to address to you, but you a little bit touched it, but maybe you would give more complete answer. How do you see your cooperation with uh, Russia? Uh, would you like to implement on the Russian market, the solutions of your company. Yeah, yeah we are, we are, we are, what, how do we do that? Um, we will have uh, companies, for example, when you have a, a recycling company in uh, Moscow or Russia, um, and they say, oh, well, this is a cool business. We want to do that. And we support them with our know-how um, uh, to, find, to find out the right uh, way to make that. Um, to give him the support to understand what we have to doing, etc. Sure, from our German view first, but we have also tra transformed to the Moscow and just technically technical transforming from the German to the uh, Moscow. We support them to bring this very quick in the market. So this is our uh, our to ensure we have tools finished. You could buy these tools, of course, um, but the main main focus is the consulting as we make a technical transfer. Mm -hmm. Because the, the the local the the the, the recycling of electronic is very local, and um, it is uh, it's very difficult. Does somebody come from Germany to go to Moscow and make the re uh, recycling? So it's better we go to Moscow and and, and bring the, the help in to understand how we could organize that with our know-how, with our experts. We have universities to understand something about electronics, et cetera, et cetera, and help him or in a team like that. So we transform it like a license. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you for your explicit answer and for your presentation. Mr. Thank Klaus. you for your uh, time. Good. One moment, please. I think there will be other questions. Yes, I can see another question. Uh, yes, uh -huh. is your company ready to create a local company to localize uh, the technology? And does uh, WIT company have Russian clients or partners? Yeah. Um, in the moment, we have not uh, really Russian partners. We're looking for something um, special for WIT. And um, we have not, but in, in the Moscow, in, no, sorry, St. Petersburg, the underground from St. Petersburg uh, is our customer from us. We have uh, voltage limit devices installed from, from BIT. So we have um, a, a one reference in, in, in Moscow, in, in Russia. Very well, very well. Next time, I hope I wouldn't like to go to Moscow before because, because Moscow uh, that that <laughs> that what you say about the Knights of Moscow. It's uh, it's really is amazing because I was three times there in my past and 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 let me say that I will go again. I will go again. <laughs> That's nice. Very nice. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, I hope that's yes. too that we all will go and visit. Uh, Boris. Okay, thank Moscow. you very much then. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Klaus. And so I would like to give the word now to the next speaker, Andrei Vasiliev, is the CEO of Teleport Lab. And he will speak about artificial intelligence for smart mobility, how to use them. Yes, sir. Can you see Hello, nice to meet all of you here. Good afternoon. Can you see my presentation? Yes. Okay, that's great. Uh, so let's start. I'll try to be brief. I'm a founder of Teleport Lab. Uh, we work in the field of digitalization of the transport industry. Actually, we are a consulting company helping uh, huge corporate partners and uh, city administrations to operate with the external innovations like startups, new technologies, and so on. Mostly we are um, expert in uh, the projects which exist in the market of um, Russia and CIS region uh, and help companies with the scouting, with the piloting, uh, going through the proof of concept stages of their ideas and so on. And uh, I've picked uh, several companies which work in the field of uh, artificial intelligence, mostly with the computer vision technologies applied to the transportation infrastructure. And uh, the first company is uh, Roadar. It's a big international team with the offices in Innopolis, and uh, now they are opening office in the New York. Uh, they have a long story of uh, creating enterprise solutions for the transport industry. Uh, their core uh, solution is make model license plate recognition system, more than 15,000 licenses uh, sold around the uh, Russia and CIS region. And also they have a mobile dash cam application with a ADAS notification with uh, 700,000 installations. And uh, now this company developing for uh, several years a slam engine for HD mapping using cameras. And uh, I wanna tell you about this product and uh, two recent cases uh, with the New York State Department of Transportation and uh, Minnesota Department of Transportation. Uh, so um, Rodley actually uh, combines two major innovation. The first one is a business innovation uh, they based on a crowdsourcing approach, uh, having a big uh, base of uh, users uh, who use uh, the app mobile application as a smart dash cam. Uh, 
uh, on the mobile phone. They place mobile phones under the windshield of the car, drive across the areas, get a notification about the speeding or any other notification about the road situation. And in the background, uh, we collect uh, data from all of these devices. So now we have a database of 700,000 uh, installation of this app. Uh, and the second innovation is a computer vision touch of a SLAM, it's simultaneous localization and mapping. I think it allows us to process uh, all this visual data and uh, build very precise high definition maps of uh, the areas. I will briefly tell you what is uh, HD map in general. It's a uh, common known like uh, usual standard definition map like uh, Google map or TomTom or Yandex map uh, with the uh, special lawyers. The first lawyer is a geometric lawyer, is the 3D model of all the objects you have uh, across the road, like uh, carps, um, traffic lights, uh, bridges, and so on. And a semantic lawyer, which contains all the uh, traffic lights, traffic signs, road signs, road lane markings, and so on, all the semantic information. Uh, this is called uh, high definition map, it's used for asset management in the cities and for self-driving cars to localize the car on the road and move safely without a driver. Uh, so basic approach uh, on the market to control assets and to uh, create uh, HD maps uh, is uh, using LiDAR-based dedicated uh, vehicles with the special drivers. Uh, it can be a um, road laboratory, like all the departments of transportation, for example, in the US and uh, Europe uh, are doing, or it can be autonomous car with a lot of lighters and other equipment, uh, like um, self-driving uh, companies are doing right now. Uh, it's very expensive because the cost of the equipment is high. Uh, it's hardly to scale because uh, you need a special vehicle. You can't use a regular car and regular drivers. And uh, you can't uh, keep this uh, map, LiDAR-based map, updated because you have enormous uh, quantity of time and resources, resources uh, to make it. So Roadly provides a camera-based approach. You can use every um, regular camera, like a smartphone. Uh, and actually, for start, you need only a smartphone and a car, regular car, or any utility vehicle, or public transportation, like bus, or something like that. And um, let the technology make the rest, and you will get a very detailed, very precise map with a four centimeter accuracy for a cheap price, not more than $20 per mile. Um, for example, LiDAR-based approach uh, map costs, can cost up to $2,000 per mile. Uh, the average price about uh, $800 per mile. And uh, this map created with a camera-based approach will have all the semantic segmentation. I will show you how it actually looks. Uh, it's a um, piloting area in uh, Moscow, uh, and uh, here you can see the road signs, you can see the buildings, you can see the traffic lights, and um, it's a dense 3D point cloud with um, some semantic segmentation on it. It means that you um, we understand what uh, every object on the map uh, is ground, road, building, wall, or traffic sign, or terrain, or something like that. Uh, and uh, the interesting thing that we have already uh, made a tool for automatic changes detection. For example, something happened with your traffic sign, uh, or something happened with the traffic light, or something happened with, a, uh, I don't know, a tree fall on the road and block the uh, driving. So you will know about this situation almost immediately. And uh, here is a list of uh, tasks which can be used using this uh, solution. A lot of things which you uh, usually make with the road laboratory as a city administrator and uh, you waste a lot of uh, time and money and people to finish this uh, task and 
you always want to make updates more often than you have right now. For example, as I know the uh, a lot of objects, for example, in the United States, uh, they were never invented. And uh, the first case uh, using this tool is a reference markers inventory. It's a case in uh, New York uh, State. Uh, here is a reference marker. Uh, it's a um, marker situated, uh, markers uh, are situated, located every one tenth of a mile. Uh, and uh, there are, for example, even New York State, there are more than 100,000 miles of all the roads and all these uh, reference markers, they were never invented right. And uh, so uh, as uh, every department of transportation, they should uh, provide accurate data. Uh, they have a very huge fines for providing inaccurate data. For example, I know about the fines of uh, $15 million for inaccurate data uh, fine from the Department of Transportation in the US. So it's a very important task for them to uh, know what's, what is happening with their transport infrastructure. Uh, we made a pilot project proof of concept uh, with uh, these uh, reference markers. Uh, here on the map, you can see the red markers. It's a theoretical position where these markers should be on the map. And the green ones uh, are markers which are where they are really located. Um, greens are two times more than red because uh, uh, they are located on both sides of the road, on the right and on the left. And uh, you can see uh, big differences in uh, real positions and uh, between the theoretical where they should be. Uh, and um, actually to complete this course using uh, road laboratories with uh, dedicated uh, vehicles and workers, it will cost uh, for company, for Department of Transportation, tens of millions of dollars. Uh, and uh, we can uh, provide this uh, task using road list lemon giant for only $20 per mile. It's uh, very cheap. It's, uh, um, so it's <clears throat> very cool solution for the CD. And uh, the most important thing that um, actually for making this pilot, we even didn't went to the United States. We just uh, got a video footage they already have uh, this video footage, I think, uh, maybe five or seven years old, and only using video information they provided to, uh, for us, we could complete this task and uh, prove the, uh, our concept that uh, using video, we can um, solve the task of uh, inventor of reference markers. And the second example of uh, this is a road science inventory. It was made in the Minnesota DOT. Uh, right now, we have a database of 4.5 million of raw and science in the app uh, from our users. Uh, most of them are in Russia, CIS, and uh, Eastern Europe. Uh, for the places where we already don't have an uh, application launch, like in the United States, we uh, use uh, dedicated vehicles. Uh, and here is an example of what we achieved in Minnesota. Uh, the main thing of this case, it can show you that um, for this engine is absolutely uh, not important what, uh, what information to uh, gather and uh, process. Because uh, as you can see on the image, um, road signs in the United States, are, some of them are very different from the common we can see in Russia and the Euro, but uh, our algorithm successfully um, process this data. And uh, now we're finishing a proof of concept stage in Minnesota and we'll uh, launch uh, this year or maybe next year, a big project of inventoring all the raw data in, in the whole state. And uh, the second company I want to show you is the Edge Vision a software company specializing in the artificial intelligence for transportation area, the same uh, area as uh, broadly. They have four uh, products, traffic, crossroad, incident, and accident. And I want to show you two cases about um, real-time adaptive traffic control and about railroad crossing safety. The first one, real-time adaptive traffic control. 
Uh, it's a pilot project in Krasnodar area. Test area includes uh, six crossroads. Uh, the general idea was to increase the traffic capacity of the intersection by using uh, real-time data from the video camera on the crossroad and uh, uh, smart algorithms. Uh, here is the configuration of the solution. Uh, at first, we have a um, traffic light uh, and we have a camera video stream, uh, number one uh, on the picture. Uh, we added traffic light controller, uh, which can um, send signals to the traffic light in the added uh, single board computer uh, with a computer vision model. Uh, how it was mounted, you can see on the, in the right corner. So how it works, uh, we get the camera video stream in the real time. Uh, we detect uh, objects, vehicles, understand the queue, and uh, in the real time, we switch uh, the uh, traffic light automatically. Uh, here, is, uh, here are the results we get from this project. Uh, the main result, we increased median speed of the uh, intersection more than two times. Uh, we decrease the lane occupancy time. It means that uh, car uh, stays on the intersection uh, less time. And um, uh, please uh, have uh, let's see in the um, uh, transport flow uh, scheme uh, in the right corner. You can see the difference uh, between adaptive and non-adaptive uh, modes of the intersection. Uh, it's a uh, summarized data from uh, several intersections. Uh, it, uh, it shows us uh, that adaptive mode almost 20% more effective in uh, traffic capacity through the intersection using adaptive. And here are um, details about four different intersections. Sometimes the algorithm works uh, much better than a uh, regular non-adaptive mode like uh, transport flow number four but sometimes it uh, works uh, almost the same like uh, non-adaptive mode, for example, transport flow number two. And uh, the last case, railroad crossing safety. Uh, we have uh, unmanned uh, railroad crossing. You can see there are no barriers and there are no uh, traffic lights. So on this uh, uh, railroad crossing, we got, uh, uh, incidents uh, actually uh, on the before the uh, pilot project we got uh, four um, four times of uh, stopping the train because of the incident on the um, uh, railroad crossing. So decided to use uh, video cameras and video flow to analyze the incidents. And uh, here is the configuration. Uh, it works pretty the same like in the uh first case but without uh, any uh any signals which uh, switches something because there is no traffic light here so uh the task here is to detect accidents and uh, the main thing the results uh, you can compare before and after before as i said uh, we had four incidents with the train stop and uh, many cases of uh, staff involvement for incidents prevention uh, and some cases of rules violation. And uh, after the pilot project, which uh, lasted for one uh, year, uh, there were no uh, incidents with the train stop because they were prevented at the time uh, of uh, detecting the incidents. Uh, so actually that's all I wanted to share with you. And um, I will uh, participate uh, touch of autonomous driving in Berlin uh, next week. I hope if I'll get visa, so I will be very happy to see you offline. Thank, Thank you very much for your presentation, Andre. I wish, of course, uh, getting the visa, successfully getting the visa. And please come to Berlin. And we have a question for you. The question is, uh, how many startups does Teleport Lab accept per year? And uh, does the country of residence matter? 
uh, the country of residence doesn't matter, but uh, mostly we work with the Russian corporate partners, so it's easier for them to work with uh, Russian-based startups. Uh, we do not accept startups uh, because we just have a general overview of the market. I know about more than 500 solutions in uh, mobility and logistic, and uh, my uh, goal is to find... Uh, uh, teams which can uh, scale their solutions globally, like uh, in the case of uh, Roadr, for example, which successfully uh, uh, sell their solutions now in the United States. Thank you for your answer, Andre, and for your very interesting uh, presentation. And what are the most prospective markets for you right now, US and um, it's a very interesting question. Of course, the U.S. Um, are still a very big market and perspective for all the companies, I mean, from Russia, from Europe or any other geographies, but um, we also want to open the office of uh, Roadr, for example, in Europe, and we're now looking for several um, locations like uh, UK, Germany, uh, and uh, it depends on the market and the speed of uh, launching pilot projects with the city administrations. Because uh, in the United States, it, uh, it's a bit easier than um, in other locations, as we see in our um, experience with Rodar, for example, right now. We would be happy to work with uh, Berlin uh, and uh, any other cities in Germany. <laughs> it depends of uh, cost for us to go to the market. Great. Thank you again, Andre, Andre for your presentation. Um, again, we wish you successful getting of, of the visa. And once you will reach Berlin, we will be happy to see you. Okay, dear speakers, dear guests, uh, I invite you now to our networking part to breakout session rooms. See you there.